My friend Carl Ridland came over. Carl is a great guitarist, orchestrator, and arranger. Really knows music, does a lot of things, even conducts the orchestra sometimes. Anyway, Carl brought over Happy Birthday because I wanted a way, an easy way, for us to kind of get into sight reading. And it, he did it. This is a very fun look at, at getting your mind into sight reading. And I want to have him back because we can do other songs like this. Carl was also kind enough to give us an extensive breakdown of his do's and don'ts for any recording studio situation. If you want to check that out, it's in the masterclass. Click the link below. <laughs> So Carl, for you, sight reading is easy. How do you make it easy for me? <laughs> <laughs> easy is one. Yeah, that's the you know we'll see about that. Okay. But um, the great thing about sight reading for guitar players is, I mean, we get we get a little maligned sometimes as being right. not good readers. That's the worst readers out of yeah, the pack. Out of yeah. the pack, they go we'll put a good music How? in front of. <laughs> You know that old How do you get a guitar player to keep quiet, put a piece of sheet music in front yeah, of Yeah, that's the joke. Yeah. And, but I think we have a great resource that's untapped. And I think the real key to sight reading is your ear. Okay. And we've developed our ears as players since we were starting. You're right. Yeah. And I think yeah. that yeah. if you can hear it, you're going to be that much better at playing it. Uh, a great example uh, would be like, we, we just did Happy Birthday. Yeah. And... One of the cool things is, is if you can hear it and you see it on a page, you get those first couple of notes, you go, oh, I know this. Right. And that's the feeling we want as sight readers. Oh, I right. know this. Right. Yeah. I, I heard it's mentioned once that it's sort of like reading a can of soup. And yeah. I thought if I could ever get to that point where I can read Campbell's chicken soup, and that's that the people that we know that sight read, yeah. that they look at it and it's a language they see. They see the, yeah. they just see the words, the notes are words, they understand every single one of them. I'm not that guy. But I can do a little bit of that. I mean, when I look at, at Happy Birthday right there that you wrote out, yes. and I play it, I can kind of read it, but that's not the same as sight reading. Now, what if it's a piece of music we've never seen before? Yeah, that, that's a great point. If you've never seen it before, you train your ear to do what's called sight singing. Okay. And you can do that in a number of ways. There's lots of books, lots of videos on sight singing, and you just kind of practice that. One of the things I did when I was uh, learning this um, was I would just stand in a grocery store line and try and hear a fifth. Oh. Ba, da, da. That's relative that pitch. Kind of yeah. Relative pitch. I don't right. even care what note it is. Yeah, right. I'm just trying to hear it, and then I visualize it in my head. What does that fifth look like? C, G, C. Oh, then, I could have done that, and yeah. I didn't for the last 30 years. Because <laughs> I know, when I look at that chart, yeah. I know where the D is. Like, I have little right. little tricks that I use. I know that, that, that the first line under the top line is a D. Right. And it's a D forever, forever. right? Right. It's, so never changes. Never changes. So when you're saying C up to G, you could visualize that. I know that the C is the line that gets written below the staff. Right, right? middle C. Middle exactly. C, right. Yeah. So then if I look up and I know that the G, it's coming back to me, is the first line up of the, right. yeah, of the first line yeah. up, right? Yeah. So yeah. so you've got that, that power fifth thing. And I know also that I've got a C here and I've got, there's only two of them that are that middle C on the right. guitar. On the guitar, here, 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 and here. And you can go C, G, or C, G, or C, G, or C, G. So that's the new dilemma that we will touch right. on. The guitar is hard because you can do stuff different places. Absolutely. You can and turn it's... your hand into a pretzel. Oh, yeah. And, and it can... can be really unnatural. Yeah. So I know that before we started this, playing yeah. Happy Birthday, I found a comfortable place to play it. My hand sits in one place. One place. I'm on three strings all next to each other. Mm -hmm. I could do it here. But 
It's easier here. It's easier there, and it's a different sound up there. That's true too. The timbre is yeah. different. Uh, I like the thicker strings, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but I have to change positions to grab that. Then. Right here, right I don't. Right. 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 Seventh is always a booger. Seventh of the key always gets you. Seventh and fourth because it's okay. a half step. Because it's a half step. And that's the way the guitars just we just inherited that. Yeah. But doesn't it lay really well yeah, right here? It lays here? great. And I think it sounds really good with the thinner strings. They'll yeah. record better, possibly, yeah. too, with another group. Right. You'll stick out yeah. a little more. Yeah. But I just is so comfortable for the hand right here. Yeah. And that's what you want. You want to be you want to be in a position when you're sight reading, especially sight reading. Now, if you've read it two or three times and you want to make a decision, oh, I want it up here, or it blends better, that's one thing. But nobody's ever gonna say, wow, he missed that note, but look what a great position he played it in. <laughs> Yeah, right. Sorry, John yeah. Williams, I missed your thing. Yeah. But wow, look at the position. I played it yeah. way up here. Right. Yeah. That's never going to happen. Never going to happen. Play the notes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's awesome. So I still am in a state of disbelief <laughs> over the fact that by learning something in advance, that you could actually end up being a better sight reader. Uh, because sight reading literally is showing up and seeing something you've never seen before. But I guess once you started to learn a language, you begin to see patterns that are pre existing or that resemble patterns that you've seen before. Absolutely, it's, it's exactly learning a language. When you learn a language, you usually listen audio-wise audio first, and they say, you know, whatever the language is, and then you repeat it. Right. Then you look at it and read it. It's kind of the same thing. It's like, we, it's like there's, there's grammar we right. learn, right. and letters. Yeah. Uh, scales would be like letters individually, but we certainly don't say T-H-E, Y E L L O W D O G J U M P E D. Right. We say the yellow dog jumped, right? Because we know that now. If we're in a different context and the yellow dog actually lies down, we still know the yellow dog. Right. Okay. Now I believe you. Yeah. <laughs> it's very. It's another language. It's right. the same thing. Yeah. And our tools are scales, keys, chords, and usually, oddly enough, very simple scales, keys, and chords. Most of these things can be broken down into triadic movement okay. and triads with embellishments that look really complicated sometimes. Yeah. But if you look at the points along mm -hmm. the road, you'll see maybe it's an F triad with some notes in between that make the line. Well, and you told me, stand in the grocery store, visualize yeah. C to G, and it's not such a leap to go. Right. Like I know what that would look like. That would be B, C, B, yeah. which is the middle yeah. The, the space yeah. above the middle, the middle line, the space above, above the middle, and then the line below it, and it'd be really quick. And Is now that... you're practicing sight reading in the grocery store. Yeah, you made me feel like a million dollars. <laughs> <laughs> That's all there is to it, is yeah. seeing it in your head, because if you can see it in your head yeah. and see it where it is on the guitar, you yeah. can go play it. Yeah. Because it's all visualization. It's no. It's learning where your notes are, which we'll talk about at some point. Yeah. And we'll get into that whole thing of how the notes are laid out on the guitar better. And not feel like we're so, like we're in a minefield. Sometimes you feel like that. Right. Well, check this out. Because of what you just taught me, that's a quarter note, a quarter note, and then right. is that a sixteenth or is that two eighths? Okay. Uh, yeah. So I would see eight. the line below the stave yeah. with the circle in it. That yeah. would be my C note. Yeah. And then I jump up to the line just above the bottom, which mm -hmm. is the second one up, which is the G note. Mm -hmm. And then I would see B C B which is the middle line, the, the space above that and the middle line again, and that would be a 16th. So yeah. I can visualize it. Yeah. That's what you're talking about. That's all there I is. I believe you. That's the key, I think, to yeah. taking what we know as guitar players and yeah. what we've been given with our ears yeah. and just taking it that other notch forward into just a written version of it. We're well, yeah, and once, once you learn this, it never changes. Never like, changes. It never becomes something different. Once you've learned where C, G, B, C, mm -hmm. and B are, yeah. It's permanent. So when every yeah. time you see that, oh, there it is. There it I is. I know that. That's it. Yeah. It never changes. As a matter of fact, one of the little tricks in sight reading is if you have a, a line that maybe goes like, um, I don't know, like this. Yeah. I never need to read that C again once I read it once. Right. I'm just reading this little scale. So what, that's like a two-bar phrase. Yeah. You see the C, and your eye sees that C stay constant. Stay you don't constant. have to deal with that anymore. You know it's already there. Mm -hmm. You're just reading the other notes. Yeah, you're just reading the other notes, and you go, oh, it's just a C scale moving up. Yeah. And then you just need to figure out the rhythmic element yeah. of it. Well, let's talk about that, because you've yeah. really made me feel like a king now that I can play Happy Birthday, and I can sort of read it yeah. rhythmically. Yeah. 
Da 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 da. Two sixteenth notes. What do you call? I've always, in several videos, I've misnamed this. What do you call the notes before the downbeat of the song? A pickup. Okay, they're pickup. It's they're a pickup. Pick it's yeah. a pickup. Yeah, okay, yeah. great. An incomplete bar. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So there's a pickup of two sixteenth notes, and then the melody starts. This is actually a really good thing because you have a pair of sixteenths, you have quarter notes, right. you have a half note, mm -hmm. you have a couple of rests. And they're repeated. If you notice, the pattern's always the same. Okay. This is very important. Yeah, this you helps you. Yeah. The piece a yeah. little bit. Yeah. The sixteenth notes are always in the same place. And a lot of music has repetition in it. That's the beauty. Most of, of the music it. I love the most has repetition in it. Yeah. yeah. That's the most important, one of the most important elements. You have a repetition. You've got all these other things that you can use, but repetition is the thing that we hang our hats on. Yeah. And, and let me just show you this again. The repetition, the notes change, but the rhythm is repetitive. Mm -hmm. Right. And that happens a lot. Yeah. So if we tap that out. You don't even need the notes. There's one you, variation. There's one variation, and you already know it's happy birthday. Yeah. Right, just hearing that. Right. Just hearing the rhythm, yeah. you immediately can hang your hat, this is happy birthday. Yeah. So you've taken out guesswork by your ear of notes, because you've kind of already practiced these notes in your head before. You kind of know where they are. You can sing it. You've taken out the rhythm because you know it already. You don't have to guess at the rhythm. You already know what it is. All you're doing is trying to play now with musicality. So if you saw something out in the world that was. So you don't even need the notes. That's a whole new song. And how many, I mean, we've heard right. that. Right. So you might yeah. see that somewhere, a song yeah. that somebody wrote, and you go, oh, I've seen those before because mm -hmm. I learned Happy Birthday, and mm -hmm. I know that. Pete Townsend. Yeah, you're right. right there. So you're it, doing it the travels oh, all over the musical universe. It travels all over rhythms and stuff like that. Once you know them, yeah. you can use that like you just wrote a song. Yeah, right. And I can visualize how that music would look on a piece of paper. Exactly. Because you've seen it, you've absorbed it, you yeah. own it. Can't wait for the next lesson. Great. <laughs>